Given what we now know about the Bush torture policies, what kind of person would trivialize such an abuse of power? What kind of person would offer to go on TV and turn such a dark page in American history to a stunt? If you guessed Sean Hannity, you'd be correct. Our number one story, Hannity volunteers to be waterboarded and says he'll do it for the families of the troops. In a moment, we'll see if he is anything but a gas bag. My former MSNBC colleague Charles Grodin went head-to-head -head with the manatee last night. Hannity wondering aloud at one point, is it really so bad to dunk a terrorist's head in water to make him talk? But as writer Michael Wolf points out today, if Hannity is actually going to go through with this, quote, we ought to insist it be done to him 183 times, the number of times the U.S. waterboarded Khalid Sheikh Mohammed in a single month. So you're gonna, for torture, right? I am for enhanced interrogation. So I don't believe no, you're, waterboarding you're not, is torture. But you don't believe it's torture. Have you ever been waterboarded? Uh, no, but Ali North has, and I talked to him about it. And, how, and was, would you consent to be uh, waterboarded yes. so we can get the truth out of you? Yeah, sure. We can waterboard you? Sure. Uh, are you busy on Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it for charity. <laughs> I'll let you do it. I wouldn't do it. I'll do it for the troops' I families. I wouldn't do it. I'll hand you a towel when you come out of the shower. Ah, yes, another conservative talking big and living small. You'll do it for charity? For the troops' families? I'll take you up on that, Sean. For every second you last, a thousand dollars. Live or on tape, provided other networks' cameras are there. A thousand dollars a second, Sean, because this is no game. This is serious stuff. Put your money where your mouth is and your nose. Oh, and I'll double it when you admit you feared for your life, when you admit the horrible truth, waterboarding, the symbol of the last administration is torture. It's about time somebody called that loud mouth punk out. I can't stand Sean Hannity. Welcome into the third and final set of the J. Rouse Show. And of course, you can reach the show at the J. Rouse Show Live.com. The J. Rouse Show Live.com. Uh, now, let's. Before you move forward, J. Uh, we yeah, have a yeah. correction to make. Yo. Yeah, you're right, buddy. And guess what, homie? We need to correct you. What you talking about, Jay? That's right, Cool Breeze. You know, during the last set, uh, you said Kathleen Sabalas. I don't think that's the correct pronunciation of her name there, Cool Breeze. Well, what is it? All right, I think it's Sibelius. Well, excuse me, right? your highness. But whatever the case may be, you screwed it up. And if I'm screwing it up, I'm closer than you in pronouncing her name correctly. Closer? The hell's that mean? Take that and put that, put that in your piece pipe and smoke it, you clown. <laughs> Oh, man. The torture debate. This is a hot topic. Uh, and, of course, you saw. Matter of fact, let's play this clip. All right. Now, if you guys watch that edition of Countdown, my favorite show, by the way, I think uh, O'Donnell came on there and he made a comment that I think is very indicative. And I think people need to listen. So let's take a look at this clip and we'll talk on the other side. This pretty much proves it, doesn't it? Hannity and his, his uh, fellow travelers do not take this topic seriously? No, they don't, and I know why. Uh, there, there, there's no question about it. The reason Sean Hannity thinks torture is a good idea, the reason Sean Hannity thinks it works, is because it would work on him. Mm -hmm. There are two different kinds of people out there in the world. The warriors, which are a very, very tiny minority, less than 1% of our population is ever going to face combat. And then there's the rest of us. I am, like Sean Hannity, one of those cowards, just like Dick Cheney, who has refused throughout my life to enter the military and ever subject myself to anything dangerous occupationally where I might lose a tooth. That is exactly Sean Hannity's approach to life. And he has exactly the same cowardly fear that I do do of combat or submitting myself to anything of the kind of risk that the American military does. And so people who live where Sean Hannity lives, in those safe places, in that safe Cheney home where no one in the Cheney family would ever submit themselves to military service, ever submit themselves to the risk of torture, they think torture works because it would work on them, mm -hmm. because they are soft, they are weak people compared to our military uh, service people, and they would crack under torture. But Al-Qaeda, the people who have devoted their lives to, tr to destroying their enemy, the people who are willing to die in their exercises, they were all willing to die on 9-11, Sean Hannity thinks torture is going to work on them because he has never, never known the kind of commitment that those people have. Nothing he's done in his life measures that kind of commitment that the American military has or that our enemies have. Our enemies are more committed than Sean Hannity will ever be. So wow. He hit the nail on the head, didn't he? 
And you know what? And that goes for not only Sean Hannity, all you know, Rush Limbaugh, all these fat cats, especially Rush Limbaugh, you know, because we have documentation that he actually got out of going to the military. He oh, he had a hurt knee or whatever the hell he used as an excuse. But all of these people sit on the sideline and they criticize. They never raised their right hand and took the oath. I, Sean Hannity, do solemnly swear to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States of America. I have. I've served in uniform for 14 and a half years. Okay? So to me, when you sit on the sideline, you know, get in the game. Don't sit and criticize. Get in the freaking game. Now, let's get on this thing about torture. Let me tell you something. You know, I love President Obama, but I think, I, well, listen, I understand both sides of the debate on this. I really do. Because on one side, people are saying, look, we are Americans. And it's that old adage, um, that old saying, you know, do as I say, not as I do. And so you have people that say, look, we don't torture folks. We're above and beyond all this. But guess what? If this person can prevent, you know, 3,000 Americans from being murdered, then let's do what we need to do to get, get the information. And I guess I would be on that side of the fence if we know for a fact that it works. There have been conflicting reports of whether this technique works or not. I'm not sure if it works. I don't know. I'm not in the know. All I know is, is that I am for whatever it takes to protect this country. Now, does that mean I support torture? You know, I think what we need to do first is define what torture is. Because to me, torture is not putting some cat in a very, very small room with a caterpillar. That's not torture. To me, torture is pulling someone's, you know, toenails out or something. Torture is, uh, you know, sticking something up somebody's behind. Uh, you know, I, to me, that's what torture is. Well, when I it, scratch that, anyway. <laughs> that's what torture is to me. At least it was, you know, speaking of the behind part, to me, torture is going to get a prostate exam, to be honest with you. <laughs> but look, that's how I really feel about it. So to me, now, is waterboarding torture to me? Hmm. I don't think it is. Now, I may be pissing some folks off here, but I just don't think it is. If it's simulated drowning, uh, I don't uh, think it is. Um, but, you know, once again, I don't know. I've never seen anyone waterboarded. I'm not going to lie like Sean Hannity and say, I want you to waterboard me because I don't want to. Because anything can happen when you get, you know, you can die from anything. And just like uh, Lawrence O'Donnell said, you know, don't be a coward. Don't sit on the sideline talking yin yang. Get out there. So we're waiting until Sean Hannity gets his fat, sorry tail under a faucet with a towel over his face and let's get him waterboarded. But the great thing about this is, is that Sean Hannity can probably pass the test because Sean Hannity knows that they're not going to kill him. See, that's the deal when they're talking about waterboarding. It gives the combatant, the enemy combatant, this person thinks that they're going to drown. So it's a big difference knowing that, hey, I'm not going to drown. It's just like, you know, when, when you're out, if you're shooting, if you're involved in a gunfight and you know you're not going to be killed, then guess what? You could be gung-ho. But the element of surprise or the unknown is, hey, I might step out here and get my head blown off. It's a whole different ball game, a whole different mindset when you don't know what the end result will be. You know. So I don't know if I agree with the president on that. I think that we shouldn't torture. But to me, what's the definition of torture? I give you my definition you know, pulling fingernails out, you know, sticking uh, nails under your skin. I mean, just all types of, ugh. to me, that's torture. Uh, you know, uh, throwing someone against a collapsible wall, that's not torture. But then again, I don't know. I've never seen it done. Hey, I've had fun today. I wanted to get into just thoughts. We'll do that next time. Hey, Book, it's been fun today. Yeah. We'll check you guys on the other side. Um, we'll also talk about the thing I said about homosexuals. Definitely want to get into that. You guys take care of yourself. It's been fun. God bless. Peace. See you, boo. Are you? I'll holler.